Hello world, Noah here. Welcome to the next episode of Django by Example. In this episode we're going to talk about how to serve static files during development. Uh, static files are the uh, JavaScript, CSS, and images that your website needs in order to function and look correct. Um, and you need a way to serve them on your website so that they can be accessible by your clients and your website can actually look very nice because as you know right now our website looks pretty plain if we go ahead and uh, run it and take a look you'll notice that there's absolutely no styling besides what the web browser does so it looks pretty boring now if we want to include a style sheet on our website that has a bunch of different styles to make this look nice we need a way to host it so that it can be accessible by all of the clients that go to visit our website so that's exactly what we're going to talk about how to do today now please note that what we talk about today does not apply to production. So when you actually publish your website on a server and make it accessible to the whole world to use, the stuff that we're going to use is meant for development and it is not quite secure enough to work in a production environment. So when we actually do deploy this website a little bit later on, we'll talk about how to host static files in that case, but when you're just doing development locally, this is by far the easiest way to do it, and it is the suggested way per Django. Um, so this is what we'll talk about today. So the first thing that we'll do is we, of course, need a place to store all of our static files. So inside of the app, we're going to create a new directory called static. The name is important. You can't call this whatever you want. You do need to call it static, and you do need to make sure that it exists within the app directory, not the project. But inside of here, we can put all the static files that we need. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new file called style.css, and this file will contain all of the styles for our website. We're just going to do a very, very simple example here. I'm not going to actually write up a whole style sheet for the website. What we're going to do is we're going to make this h1 header that appears on every single page on the website red. So we can easily tell if this header is red, then the uh, static file, the styles is being loaded correctly. If it's still black, we know that the styles are not being loaded correctly. So that's an h1. We're just going to select h1, and we're going to set the color to be red. Very, very simple. Uh, now, obviously, you'd want to write a whole style sheet for the website to make it look really nice, uh, but we're just not going to do that because we're talking about hosting static files in this video. There are separate videos on my channel that talk about CSS if you're interested in learning. Okay, so now we have the static file directory, and we have a uh, file within there that we want to host. Now, as a matter of fact, just by having a folder called static within the app, Django will automatically host it for us as long as we are on uh, a development server. Let's just talk about uh, a couple of important things to note before we actually take a look at that. You want to open the settings.py file that exists inside of your project and take note of a few things. First of all, debug is set to true. The static files will only be hosted automatically when debug is equal to true. So when you actually deploy this on a server, you'll set debug equal to false and then you'll deploy the static files in a more secure way. But while debug is true, while you're just developing on your local server, uh, this is perfectly fine, and that is necessary for this to work. Also under installed apps, you do need django.contrib.staticfiles. Uh, when you generate a new project, this is automatically put in installed apps for you, so there should be absolutely no reason why it's not there. But if for whatever reason it's not working, just double, double check and make sure that this line is indeed there. Then down at the bottom is the configuration for static files, and you'll notice that there's only one uh, item there right now, and that's the static URL. The static URL basically um, just says where on your server, or where on your website you want the static files to be available. So in this case, it's slash static. So if my URL is example.com, then if I go to example.com slash static, I'll be able to access the static files. In the case of style.css, it would be example.com slash static slash style.css. Pretty simple. There really shouldn't be a reason to change the static URL. If you wanted to change the name from static to something else, 
or when you deploy if you wanted to host uh, on a subdomain like static.example.com for some reason, then you could, but nine times out of ten there's no reason to actually change this setting. With all of that out of the way, we know that debug is set to true and static files is in our list of installed apps. So if I go ahead and restart the server, that style.css file should be available to us. To get to it, we go to the URL of our uh, server slash static slash style dot CSS. And as you can see, it loads the source of the style.css file. So that means that the file is in fact being hosted correctly because we can see the contents of the file right there. Now of course uh, the h1 is not set to red yet because we haven't loaded the style file in our HTML code or our HTML source. So let's take a look at how to do that. You'll want to open up your base.html file because we want to load these styles on every page of our website. So instead of loading the style.css file on index and item and any other pages we might add in the future, you can just load it once in base and because of template inheritance, it will automatically load that file on uh, all of the other pages. We'll go ahead and do this uh, before the head block, so the first line of the head tag right here because if you want to override any of these styles in a page, you can do so within the head block. Um, we will, of course, make this a link with the rel equals style sheet and the href we're going to get in just a moment. This is, of course, the line to load a style sheet in HTML, uh, but we just need to give for href the link to the style sheet. Now, as we know, it's accessible at you know, whatever the URL is, slash static, slash style.css, so I could actually manually type that URL in. But Django provides a safer uh, way to go about dealing with this. Django can automatically generate static URLs for specific files. You just have to give it the file name and a special command. The reason why you would want to do this is because if you change the name of this uh, route to something other than just static, if you rename it, or if you use a subdomain, or if you host it in any other way, then you'd have to go back everywhere that you reference a static file and change the reference. But if you let Django generate the URLs for you, then it will happen automatically. But if that doesn't make sense, it's not a huge deal. Uh, but Django recommends this over manually typing in the URLs, and I do as well. The first thing that we need to do is we need to load the static files module into our page so that we can access static files. So uh, the first thing we'll do, we'll make our first line be uh, curly brace percent sign to do a template command and we're going to load static files. This will give us access to some commands that relate to static files and we're going to use the static command. Within the quotation marks for the href, we're going to do curly brace percent sign, and we're going to use the static command. After static, you put a space, and then in quotation marks, you just put the name of the static file that you're trying to reference. In this case, we're trying to reference style.css, so I'll start typing it in. You'll notice that PyCharm will automatically suggest that file for us because it knows um, that style.css exists within a static file directory like that. So I can hit enter to finish it. So this static command will basically generate the static URL for this file, styles.css, and insert it as the href for this link tag. Now if we go back to the actual page and hit refresh, you'll notice that it's now red. If I pull up inspect element, we can take a look and see exactly why. If we look at the head, we'll notice that the first line says link rel equals style sheet href equals slash static slash style dot CSS. I didn't have to manually type this URL in. I, main, I merely just said load the static file style dot CSS and it automatically generated the URL for me. And since this static file is being hosted correctly, it was able to load and thus color the H1 red. So we can clearly tell uh, that this is working. One other thing that's worth discussing, this folder, this static folder, exists right now within our app, but the style.css file really applies to the entire website. Now, of course, this website only has one app, but if you make a bigger website that has multiple apps, you might want certain static files to be accessible to all of your apps. 
This might be a little bit confusing uh, because many Django projects only have one app and we haven't actually talked about uh, using more than one app in a single project, but take my word for it, uh, this is just something good to know. What we would want to do is move this static directory to the root of our project. So I'm just going to drag it up to the name of the project and hit OK. So it's now no longer within our app, it's at a project level. Basically, if I included more than one app, since this static folder exists at a project level, all of the projects will have access to style.css, or all of the apps, rather, will have access to style.css, not just a single app. But there is an issue, because if I go to refresh this, you'll notice that the, uh, the title is now black, because it's unable to properly load the style file. And the reason for this is because when the static folder was inside of the app, Django would automatically load it because it knows to look for a folder called static inside of each of the apps that are loaded. But since this is at a project level, we need to tell Django to load it. So to do this, we need to open up settings.py and scroll down to the very bottom and add another setting to static files. We want to add a new um, value called static files underscore dirs for directories. Um, all caps with underscores, the name is very important. And this is going to be a list of other locations where we might have static files. So in this case, it's basically the root of the project inside of a folder called static is where we have some additional files. So we want to specify that. Rather than manually type out a full path to the, you know, to the location, we can just say os.path.join base dir, base directory, comma, static. So the base directory would be this, programming underscore database, and then the static folder. So basically static file dirs is a list of directories, and in this case it contains the path to this static folder right there. So now if I go ahead and restart the server and refresh the page, we're now back to that red heading because since this static folder is in a different location other than just an app, we manually specify the location where it is, and so therefore Django knows to go ahead and load it, and when we refresh, it is indeed loaded. You can have a combination of these two, so you can have a static folder within the app that contains files that are specific to that one app, and then you can have a static folder at the root of the project that contains all uh, or static files that apply to all projects, like a base style sheet or maybe you know a header image or anything else that you might have. So that's all for this video. Once again, this only applies to uh, development. This does not apply to production. So if you go to deploy this website on a server, you'll notice that this probably won't work anymore, or if it does, then it's insecure. So we're going to talk about how to actually do that a little bit later on. So as always, subscribe if you want to see more, hit the like button if you enjoyed this video, and continue on for some more Django. Bye for now.